We'll see how good this audio comes through. It is a windy day in Southern Nevada. And yesterday I found this amazing dispersed campsite. It's several miles down a primitive track and just within the base of the mountains. At first I wasn't sure if I was maybe biting off more than I could chew with the van, but the road turned out to be fairly gentle and I got here no problem. This would be a superb place to spend a few nights if the weather's on your side, but in this case, it's definitely not. Nevertheless, I'm glad to have found it, and I slept amazingly last night despite the wind. There are no fire rings or anything like that. It's just a spacious clearing, enough room for maybe two vehicles on this shelf that overlooks a valley to the west and rock formations to the north. That was nice. Whew. It's January 2023, and this is part two of my Winnebago Revel adventure from Arizona and up into Utah. I'm heading up to Utah to pick up my 1991 Land Rover Defender 110, which I abandoned at a friend's house last year, and then used the van to tow it back home to Arizona and I'm making an adventure of it. I'm taking the van into the backcountry, doing some exploring and recording tracks and waypoints on my GPS, which I make available to Patreon subscribers. So if you're interested in retracing my steps, I invite you to check out Venture Forward on Patreon or VentureForward.com. Right now I'm gonna do a little bit of exploring around camp on foot, maybe enjoy my coffee in a spot that's sheltered from the wind, and then come back to the van and I'll probably head out. That was a really cool old mining site. It wasn't filled in or anything. It was preserved with cement and cages so you could see what used to be there, but uh, you know, just to protect the general public, it's inaccessible. The whole state of Nevada is dotted with mines, both ancient historical mines and active operations. 
This isn't an after-school special, so I know that I don't need to tell you that if you stumble upon an open mind, to stay out of it. I think right now I'm going to seize the opportunity to cover some ground and push a good distance north, try to get out of this really strong wind. this track into the mountains and it's been slow going it's wide enough for the van but I'm starting to wonder if it's in vain I'm looking for uh, a campsite or some uh, point of interest and I haven't found anything yet so I'm just scouting ahead on foot well it looks passable so I might as well go back and get the van and see where it goes but uh, I might end up backtracking After a few rough and very slow miles, the track ended at this wildlife irrigation station. And there's nothing here. Uh, this place is for the animals. So I'm going to backtrack down the road. And there was a wide spot. I think I'm going to pull off and set up there for the night. What makes a good campsite anyway, when all you're really doing is sleeping in your vehicle? It has to be flat, it has to be private, and most importantly, it has to be safe. And I'm deep in the mountains down a rugged three mile track. I don't think I'm gonna see anyone tonight. I think I'll sleep well. The Winnebago Revel comes with a shower, and when we got the van two years ago, I was like, all right, it has a shower, that's nice, but I don't know how much I'm going to use it. After years of living in the Jeep, the occasional hotel room or truck stop proved to be more than sufficient. And in fact, we didn't use the shower in the van on a daily basis because it doubles as a closet, so you have to shuffle gear around to use it, but we did use it weekly. And I have to say that now I'm glad we have it because it is so satisfying getting a hot and comfortable shower off grid in the middle of nowhere. I feel great. This is the worst road ever. It's not a washboard road. There's moguls, or there's these alternating waves. Left, right, left, right, left, right. And uh, it is not van friendly. Yeah. I'm on a long, straight BLM road running between high tension lines heading heading toward the mountains. By my best guess, I have about three miles left of this, this bumpy madness. And then once I'm in the mountains, I'm hoping that things will peter out a little bit. 
it might still be rough, but at least it won't be these these undulating waves. Well, without too much trouble, the van made it to the top of the pass, and it's a beautiful view from up here with White Cap Mountains in the distance to the west. Not bad for a power line road. I did some scouting on the other side, and the descent looks fairly gentle. You can tell that the road is probably often used by the power company to check up on their towers, but I'm going to take a minute to catch my breath, enjoy the view, and then start working my way down the other side. After topping off on diesel, I was hungry myself, so I looked for restaurants in the area and I found Pioneer Saloon in Good Springs, Nevada. I had a border burger which contained guacamole, bacon, pepper jack cheese, and I had it with two patties and a side of mac and cheese. It was delicious. After the saloon, I promptly sought out a place to spend the night. And this worked out nicely. I'm on BLM land. The interstate is about a half mile away. There's a prison over there, a casino about three quarters of a mile away, and a Starbucks at the trailhead. Normally, I would say that this doesn't sound like too good a spot, but right across the highway, there's a dry lake bed with a ton of boondockers attracting a ton of attention. All the action is over there. No one's looking on this western side of the highway. And look, oops, I found a Nissan grill.
Las Vegas. What a spectacle. I visited the Strip once before, maybe 15, 20 years ago, and I had almost forgotten how impressive it is. Anyway, I'm just passing through this morning. I thought I'd take the scenic route. And right now, I'm back on the interstate, making my way towards St. George, Utah. When I get to town in approximately 55 minutes, I think first I'll find a bite to eat for lunch, and then I'll look for a campsite and settle in. I've spent some time in St. George before, so I happen to know where there's some good Mexican food. When I rolled into St. George, Utah today, I remembered this great dispersed campsite that I already had on file from a previous stay. The nice thing about it is it's just a stone's throw from town down a primitive track. There's really fast cell service for productivity, and it's away from the major boondocking area, which is over there and sort of up on this hill. Nobody comes up here, so good privacy. Technically, we're in Arizona, but we're right on the state line and everything you see past the van to the north is St. George, Utah. What do you think about the Sprinter van's four-wheel drive capability? I will say that driving this off pavement, the van seems to lumber along. And also, on the wrong type of road like it was on yesterday between the power lines, it was just brutal. It wasn't too technical for the van, but I was being tossed back and forth so violently that uh, sprinter owners, if you take a stab at that route, you're gonna wanna secure your dishware. Otherwise, I'm genuinely impressed by this machine's four-wheel drive capability. I think the very responsive traction control in conjunction with the agile off-road rip kit, which is the upgraded suspension that I have on this, it allows me to at least attempt to take this a lot of the same places that I'd go in my Jeep, RNG. I'm going to call that a wrap for this week. Next week, I'm going to continue deeper into Utah on my way to get my Land Rover Defender. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.